In addition to being forced to give up our awards and our titles and our opportunities, the NCAA forced me and my female swimmers to swim to share a locker room with Thomas, a six foot four, 22 year old male equipped with and exposing male genitalia. Let me be clear about this. We were not forewarned we would be sharing a locker room. No one asked for our consent and we did not give our consent. And I'll, I'll set the scene, a swimming locker room is not a place of modesty. You're undressing, you're fully exposed. And we were forced to take off our swimsuit in front of a man who was doing the exact same thing. If nothing else, I truly hope how you can see this is a violation of our right to privacy and how some of us have felt uncomfortable, embarrassed, and even traumatized by this experience. On behalf of HRC's more than three million members and supporters, I've come here today with a single message. The LGBT people, LGBTQ plus people of the United States are living in a state of emergency. This is not an exaggeration. This is not a dramatization. More than 525 anti-LGBTQ plus bills have been introduced this year in the states. More than 220 of those bills target the transgender community, many targeting children, trans ch transgender children. And more than 75 of those anti-LGBTQ plus bills have now become law. <laughs> Women you and don't some that believe are that a biological male has a physical advantage in sports over a biological female? Not as def a definitive statement. Give me an example. Well, no, I, I don't think. How, 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 how many female members of the NBA do you see? Well, I can say that, you know, there's been this news article about men that think that they could beat Serena Williams in tennis right? That they think that they could actually score a point on her. Um, and it's just not the case. She is stronger than that. What's your experience, Ben? Male, female. Both Serena and Venus lost to the 203rd ranked male tennis player, which they're phenoms for women. Andy Murray, he oh, he was been joking about um, myself and him playing a match. And I'm like, Andy, seriously, like, are you kidding me? Because for me, tennis and men's tennis and women's tennis are completely almost two separate sports. So I'm like, if I were to play Andy Murray, I would lose 6-0, 6-0 five to six minutes, maybe 10 minutes, because, it's not, no, it's are, true, it's honestly, true, it's a completely, really. it's a completely different sport. The men are a lot faster, and me, and um, they, they get, they serve harder, they hit harder, it's just a different game, mm -hmm. and I love to play women's tennis, and I, I only want to play girls, because I don't want to be embarrassed, I would not do the tour, I wouldn't do Billie Jean any justice, so Andy, stop it, yeah. we're not going to, I'm not going to let you kill me. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, when it comes to tennis, I only want to play girls. Yeah. <laughs> we got that going on. Um, my experience, my husband, he swam at University of Kentucky as well, in terms of accolades, and in terms of national ranking. I was a much better swimmer than him. Um, he could kick my butt any day of the week without trying. Every time we see these waves of anti-LGBTQ plus legislation move through states, over 500 bills just this year, we see it accompanied by campaigns of hate and bias online. In Florida, when the Don't Say Gay or Trans bill was moving through, you saw a 400 percent increase in language of groomers online targeting the LGBTQ plus community. Let's be clear that this is instilling fear in people. This is perpetuating transphobia and homophobia that has real life impact on harm on the lives of my community. You were talking about just the incredible surprise, shall I say, to put it gently, of finding a biological man, a six foot four biological man in your locker room and having to accept that without being asked about it, without being told about it even. What was that like for you? Tell us about that. I, again, we only became aware we would be undressing next to a man was when we had to see a man undressing while we were simultaneously undressing. And so I immediately left the locker room and I went up to one of the officials on the pool deck and I said, what are the guidelines to allow a man into our locker room? I know the guidelines for the competition, but what are the guidelines for the locker room? And he so nonchalantly said back, oh, we actually got around this by making locker rooms unisex. And so I'm thinking to myself in these brief moments, first and foremost, you just admitted this is a male by acknowledging how you had to change your rules to make the locker rooms unisex. You acknowledge that we do not share the same sex, first and foremost. Secondly, unisex, any man could have walked into our locker room, any coach, any official, any man who wanted to would have had full reins to and bare minimum we weren't forewarned about it. And that's, that's the traumatizing part. Of course, the experience in and of the locker room itself is traumatizing, but I think for me, it was so easy for them to dismiss our rights to privacy. 
Um, Senator Durbin, in, in your opening statement, you had mentioned this rhetoric. It's, um, you had mentioned that, what message does it send to trans individuals? And my combat to that is, what message does this send to women, to young girls who are denied of these opportunities? So easily their rights to privacy and safety thrown out of the window to protect a small population, protect one group as long as they're happy? What about us? That is the overall general consensus of how we all felt in that locker room. Ms. Robinson, do you agree with Ms. Gaines that there's a difference between women and men? If the question is about trans women... I'm just asking, is there a difference between women and men? I mean, what I can say here is that the NCAA has rules in place. They've had rules in place for the last decade, and when this competition okay, okay, happened, I'm, I'm gonna try the again. rules were clear. Do you believe there's a difference between women and men? It, it's a yes-no question. It is, it, do you believe there's a difference? Oh, I think that we're talking about this case with the NCAA. No, I'm asking a question. Do you believe there's a difference between women and men? Most I, people could answer this very simply. I, I'm curious if you're willing to do so. Oh, absolutely. I'm just putting it into the context of the is that conversation a yes? that we're having. I think that there are definitions it, related it, to is, sex. Is, is that a yes? So I'm that trying to get a yes or no. I'm not trying to get, get a speech. It, oh, I, is I'm, there a difference between women and men? I think that there are definitions for biological sex. Okay, so you're which not is answering that. Let me gender. ask you this question then. Why do women's sports exist? If you can't define a difference between women and men, why not abolish women's sports and just tell little girls to swim with little boys and see who wins? Oh, I'm simply saying that um, that sex is My different question, than gender. Why and I do, do believe why that women's, do women's sports, sports have exist? a great value. I mean, Senator, I'll tell M you right Ms. now. Ms. Robinson, please answer the question I'm asking you. Absolutely. Why do women's sports exist? I think that there are so many positive benefits to sports. But I mean, why have a separate about category about for women? If, if, you, if there's no difference between women and men, why to have women's sports? I'm saying that there's a difference between sex and gender and that the NCAA has rules in place, which they have for the so last Mr. decade. Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to enter into the record an, an article from Duke, Duke Law called Comparing Athletic Performances for the Best Elite Women to Boys and Men.